gear. Oh, sorry. I guess I should put that on, right? Yeah, go ahead and get mic'd up. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, um, I, st I have you pretty good, so I, I, if I have... Um, we now have 370,000 tests that have been done. Uh, the majority of those, over 220,000 in the last eight days, which of those of you who have been tracking the South Korea numbers, put us equivalent to what they did in eight weeks that we did in eight days. This was made possible because of the HHS team working together, bringing together the strength of the FDA with the CDC and the, under the leadership of Secretary Azar. We're very proud of those numbers, but we know that we have to do more, and we continue to accelerate in testing to ensure that the, those who need the test are tested first and have access. As we talked about yesterday, we're working on the ability for people to take their own sample. That does not mean home testing. That means taking your own sample in the front of your nose um, with available swabs into normal saline that can be transplant transported to the laboratories. That will allow and free up all of the drive-throughs to be very sparing on PPE, because you'll be able to do that with gloves rather than the full PPE outfits. This will allow for more of that PPE to be dedicated to our hospitals. Um, I think those of you who are tracking this epidemic closely, like I am, you will begin to see that there is encouraging results coming out of Italy. Um, we are impressed by the, the decreases that are seen in mortality, the number of people succumbing to this illness, and the number of new cases. Our new cases will continue to surge because we're still working on our backlog. We continue to monitor what is happening in Washington, D.C. This is the president's COVID task force right now that you are hearing from, giving the latest on uh, what they are doing on a federal level to help out governments. Uh, we are going to be monitoring this. We are still uh, keeping an eye on it. We're going to continue on, though, with our local news. We have a lot to cover tonight at 5. Yeah, including Governor Greg Abbott providing an update on the latest numbers of COVID-19 cases in Texas. As of this afternoon, more than 11,000 tests had been administered across the state. More than 700 cases in 65 counties have come back positive. And so far, 11 people have died. Here in Bear County, the number of those tested positive rising to 69 with one death. And in San Antonio, school districts have started to announce that they are extending the school closure that is currently underway. Northeast ISD, Northside ISD, San Antonio ISD, SSA ISD, East Central ISD, Southwest ISD, Medina Valley ISD, Edgewood ISD, and we have just learned Alamo Heights ISD campuses all now remaining closed. The new date is April 24th. Lavernia ISD also extending their closure till April 21st as well. We expect more districts to announce their status and uh, an extension. We will provide that to you on air and online as that information comes in. in the meantime, we are just a few hours away from the city and county's newest order taking effect. The stay home work safe order issued yesterday by San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf. Today, we learned about Coney's Heights taking the very same action. For many people, that means going to work and earning a paycheck out of the question for the next few weeks, but help could be on the way. Bear County commissioners approving more than $5 million worth of loans and grants to help keep local small businesses afloat. Our Garrett Berger at that meeting where the money was approved, he tells us how it will work. Garrett, are these loans available and how can people get them? We have heard that the applications are now live on the website. We'll get to that a little bit later, but these are for small and micro businesses. So that means employ businesses with 10 or fewer employees to buy, apply for the loans or fewer than five employees to apply for the grant money. All of this meant to keep these little guys afloat as the at a time when the cash isn't flowing so well. So let's get down to the details. Businesses could get up to $25,000 for a loan or up to $5,000 for a grant. And loans would be zero interest with payments deferred for a few months until things get back closer to normal. 
The county expects there to be enough money for almost 250 businesses. One official says the point of the programs isn't to make business owners whole per se, it's to make sure their employees still have jobs. So they want to show that they're going to demonstrate that they can continue to keep uh, their staff online. You know, maybe it's doing different tasks, maybe it's reduced salary, but something that helps the employees stay employed. You can find out more details on how to apply on our website, ksat.com. Uh, right now, we're going to toss it back to the studio for more breaking news. Live downtown, Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you so much, Garrett. We want to go back to Washington now because Dr. Fauci is now speaking. Of course, he is the national expert on infectious disease. It's listen in. Through no fault of their own. But what we're seeing now is that understandably, people want to get out of New York. They're going to Florida. They're going to Long Island. They're going to different places. The idea, if you look at the statistics, it's disturbing. About one per thousand of these individuals are infected. That's about eight to ten times more than in other areas, which means when they go to another place for their own safety, they've got to be careful, monitor themselves. If they get sick, bring it to the attention of a physician, get tested. Also, the idea about self-isolating for two weeks will be very important because we don't want that to be another seeding point to the rest of the country, wherever they go. And then thirdly, just one, one just comment about, about drugs and the testing of drugs. You know, you heard yesterday about drugs being out there that physicians on an off-label way can prescribe it to give people hope of something that hasn't been definitively proven to work, but that might have some hope. I don't want anybody to forget that simultaneously with our doing that, we're also doing randomized clinical trials on a number of candidates. You've heard about candidates, but there are others in the pipeline where we'll be able to design the study and over a period of time, particularly since we have so many infections, we'll be able to determine definitively, are these safe and are they effective? We're talking about remdesivir, other drugs, immune sera, convalescent sera, monoclonal antibodies. All of these are in the pipeline now, queuing up to be able to go into clinical trial. So I'll stop there and talk. Thank you, Tom. Good job. Gary, how about just a quick few minutes on uh, how we're doing over at the Hill? Please. Thank you, sir. We're, made, we're gaining great progress on this phase three legislation. Negotiations continue. We've had continued reports. Uh, I've been up there with Secretary Mnuchin. Secretary Mnuchin continues today with uh, uh, Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, checking in with the President. They're getting closer and closer. They expect to vote as soon as possible. I, I just want to walk through a, a couple of key points. This legislation is urgently needed to bolster the economy, provide cash injections and liquidity and stabilize financial markets to get us through a difficult period, a difficult and challenging period in the economy uh, facing us right now, but also to position us for what I think can be an economic rebound later this year. We started the year very strong, and then we got hit by the uh, coronavirus in ways that probably nobody imagined possible. Again, we continue to monitor the president's news conference taking place right now from the White House. We continue to stream it live on KSAT.com if you would like to watch the remainder of that news conference. Meanwhile, the staff at local hospitals are asking for donations of protective gear for San Antonio health care providers. As Stephanie Cerna explains, today Governor Greg Abbott said those supplies are on the way. And all day today, people have been dropping off donations like masks and gloves here to UT Health. And earlier this afternoon, Governor Greg Abbott praised the medical community and groups who have contributed personal protective equipment to doctors and nurses who treat patients infected with COVID-19. Now, he said next week, Texas should be getting more than a million masks per week and that the Texas Department of Transportation has donated about 3,595 masks. He also thanked Dr. Luis Rios who donated a thousand masks, a thousand gloves, and hundreds of gowns. To accelerate our ability to both assemble and then disperse all of the supplies that are needed, we created a supply chain strike force so we can more rapidly address these needs. Uh, yesterday, that strike force placed an order uh, for more than $80 million worth of supplies. By the end of this week, 
the Texas Division of Emergency Management will be receiving approximately 100,000 masks per day. And you can still donate to UT Health tomorrow from 7 to 6. They are looking for professional unused respiratory masks that are still in the packaging, medical gloves, eye protection, goggles, face shields, and thermometers. Now statewide, the governor encouraged people to donate or volunteer by going to texas.gov. We were live from the University Health System. Stephanie Cerna, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephanie. Not many of us realized this, but the United States reached a terrible milestone. Just yesterday, Monday, more than 100 new coronavirus related cases and deaths were reported, rather, making it the deadliest day in the fight against COVID-19 in the U.S. As efforts to halt the progress have clobbered the economy, Congress and the White House are working on a plan to provide aid to Americans. After days of stall talks, today may be a deal that a day that the deal is finally reached. Camilla Bernal is there with the latest. The coronavirus pandemic forcing about a third of the world's population into some kind of lockdown. In the United States, more than 40 percent of people are under stay-at-home orders. We think we have the chance to significantly reduce the spread of the coronavirus. Some companies changing their business models to help Americans. Pizza Hut, Amazon and Walmart are just some of the businesses hiring more workers. Ford is working with other companies to produce masks and ventilators, equipment medical professionals desperately need. By the middle of May, uh, we could be making uh, hundreds of thousands of these uh, ventilators. On Capitol Hill, the White House and Congress furiously negotiating a stimulus package to help people cope with the pandemic. It's the most serious threat to Americans' health in over a century. The roughly $2 trillion plan would provide a jolt to the economy and give aid to hard-hit workers and industries. And we, hopefully we can get it over the finish line. As the days go by without a compromise, the tense divide between Republicans and Democrats grows stronger. But now a bit of optimism as both sides hope a deal may be done soon. We are very, very pleased with what seems to be moving forward in the bill in the bipartisan bill. With the city and county stay home work safe orders going into effect tonight at 1159, you might have questions about what that means for you. One question that's been asked a lot is how will the orders actually be enforced? San Antonio police are not going to pull you over if you are outside your home and you do not need some sort of permission slip to prove that you work for a business that is allowed to be open. We expect that the public will follow the stay home order and our enforcement will be focused on those businesses that should be closed and that those who are open are following the proper social distancing measures. Tonight, the city holding a question and answer session about COVID-19 and the emergency declaration. If you have a question you'd like answered, you can submit it on our website. Just go to ksat.com slash SAQ. We will be live streaming the entire Q&A on ksat.com. And tonight, during the second half hour of the News at 6, I'll be chatting with Mayor Ron Nuremberg and County Judge Nelson Wolf live about questions our viewers have about the stay home work safe order and how our city and county leaders are responding to the COVID-19 crisis. It's called Coronavirus Q&A. It's something we do every weekday during the 6 and online during the KSAT News at 9. Wiped out grocery store shelves. Right now, let's check out the weather situation in Adam Kasky. Yeah, we have a lot of sunshine out there, and today was our first 90-degree day since late October. And it's going to be a trend here for the next few days. We'll be back to talk about, to talk about that in our next cold front coming up. Now wiped out grocery store shelves, sorry about that. Driving up business for one local store uh, for people on the hunt for eggs. If you're looking to get your hands on some like everyone else, we're gonna tell you where it is after the break. I want to give you a heads up, Bernie police issuing a warning about potential scammers looking to take advantage of vulnerable seniors during this time. With more people opting for grocery and food delivery services, the Bernie Police Department reminding people never give personal information or bank information out over the phone. HEB and Favor have teamed up to offer seniors a safe way to get their groceries. 
The senior support line is for anyone 60 years old and up. The number to call 1-833-397-0080. It's open from 11 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon, seven days a week. Our Patty Santos will have more about this scam coming up tonight on the Night Beat at 10. Even as many businesses have temporarily closed their doors, others can't seem to open theirs wide enough for all of the demand. Grocers for one of them, but they're not the only source of basic foods. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz takes us to one small business seeing big crowds. Long before the rooster would even crow, people scrambled to get in line. You need to keep space. We have plenty of product. Crazy. Ernest Garcia has waited an hour for one thing. Eggs. They can't find no eggs nowhere. Where to go next, man? This is Porter Poultry and Eggs, a modest 86-year-old family business off Highway 90. And they have eggs. Three crates of eggs. With the lines forming at 4 a.m., Blanca Garcia opened for business an hour early. We're here to serve. We're not gouging. We're not hoarding. We don't want to make any more money than what we have to, but we want to get our people fed. The line's orderly, if not always socially distanced. Anybody parked on the left side, if not, we're going to start giving tickets. Police intervene to deal with parking issues. Even as grocers are restocking as fast as they can, Mary Jane De La Fuente is looking elsewhere. My kids want eggs. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Have you been to the grocery store? Um, yes, and most of it's like just all empty. It's so sad. Garcia says she just got in three shipments. There are eggs. It's a matter of supply chain. These eggs are coming out of California. Right now, my daughter is trying to locate brokers that have eggs all over the United States. And it's a lot more than eggs in demand, and they have it inside this giant freezer. They have pallets of meat, beef, pork, and, of course, poultry. Garcia says the past two weeks have seen high demand, and they're working to fill a need in the weeks ahead. Next! Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. What a day out there today. Bright sunshine and we made it to 90 degrees. Actually, we topped out at 91, so the hottest day since I believe October 20th. It's been a while. Get used to it for the rest of the work week and then we see a big change this weekend. So let's take a look at our weather headlines there. Sunny and hot the next couple of days. Unseasonably warm, that's for sure, but I think we'll be just shy of record breaking territory. Then a Friday night cold front hits us. That's going to have an impact on our weekend temperatures. Unfortunately, with this front, just minimal chances of rain. But I do want to point out, speaking of rain, a recent rainfall. Look at the grass around the airport. Nice and green. Everything is glowing nice and green out there. We're at an even 90 right now. Dew point of 54. That's what's nice. The dew point took a big hit and is down. More on that in a minute. First temperatures, Holotus 91, Bulverdia as well. 88 in Divine and Bandera. 91 in New Braunfels. We're feeling a little hint of summertime out there on this Tuesday. Hondo and Uvalde at 92, along with Catula. So I think by tomorrow, we'll make it to 94 for the high temperature, and then you see things fall off as we get into the upcoming weekend. That's a result of the cold front that'll be headed our way. At that point, we'll be down in the mid to upper 70s. Regarding the humidity here, huge difference across South Texas. Very dry air in the hill country. Rock Springs, a dew point of 37 along with Kerrville. But then you head down into the coastal plain, very muggy, with dew points right at 70 degrees, the oppressive humidity. A little dry line snuck its way in, so we're getting a little break in the humidity, at least along and west of I-35. And I think that's going to be the case for a good portion of the day tomorrow as we go through time. You'll see that humidity try to take over again, but even into the afternoon, dew points likely in the 50s, which is comfortable, all things considered. But we're only going to have that for a day tomorrow. So we had the morning clouds earlier today. They cleared on out, then a lot of sunshine. Big blue H, big upper level high. That's our main driving force. It's not centered right overhead, so it's not really pressing down on us hard like it does in the summertime, but it's close enough to influence our weather. So more 90 degree temperatures and a lot of sunshine up until we get into the weekend. So here's the breakdown. Clear this evening. Not too humid out there, at least if you're along in west of I-35. That includes San Antonio. And the temperature's falling off rather quickly. We'll go from 90 now to 84 at 8 p.m., 10 p.m. down into the mid-70s. So overall, becoming a very pleasant evening out there. Tomorrow morning, 
Not a bad start to the day at 56, but look how quickly we warm up. By noon, we'll be 85. I think we'll top out at 94 with a lot of sunshine tomorrow. So even warmer tomorrow than what we had today. Thursday, right around 90 degrees. I think we'll have some morning clouds because of some added humidity in the air. Then a lot of sunshine, 91. Friday, right near 90, a little extra cloud cover as well. Friday nights when the cold front hits with that front, uh, maybe a 20 to 30% chance of rain. We're not expecting all that much uh, from that cold front as it moves in in terms of rain, but behind it, we are expecting a big temperature drop and that'll put us back down in the mid to upper 70s by the upcoming weekend. We'll be back with sports and more coming right up. Hi everyone. I'm coming to you from my home here in San Antonio, Texas. But we have been self-isolated for the past almost two weeks. I know everyone back home is doing it tough right now, but I hope you are all safe and also staying at home. First star Patty Mills with a message to his fellow countrymen in Australia now that the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo have been officially postponed in big board sports. Now, we told you about this yesterday. Now it's become official. The 2020 Olympics schedule for Tokyo this summer now been postponed. Will be played no later than the summer of 2021 due to the coronavirus outbreak. IOC Vice President Dick Pound gave us a heads up on Monday with his interview with USA Today. But today, the president of the International Olympic Committee, Thomas Bach, and the Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, verified it during a conference call this morning, both expressing their sheer concern about the worldwide COVID COVID-19 pandemic and what it is doing to people's lives and significant impact it is having on global athletes preparations for the games. Here's just part of the statement released today by the IOC in the present circumstances and based on the information provided by the WHO today, the IOC president and prime minister of Japan have concluded that the games of the 32nd Olympiad in Tokyo must be rescheduled to a date beyond 2020, but no later than summer 2021 to safeguard the health, the athletes, everybody involved in the Olympic Games and the international community. Speaking from his home here in San Antonio, Spurs star guard Patty Mills with words of encouragement for his fellow Australian athletes in the wake of today's decision to postpone the 2020 Games. Patty was preparing to represent Australia in the 2020 Games, but like most athletes around the world, is sequestered for the time being due to the outbreak of the coronavirus. In this video posted on his Twitter account, Patty supporting the Australian Olympic Committee and their proactive approach in handling this unprecedented crisis. Don't be discouraged. Your goal doesn't change. Just regroup, regather, and adjust your preparation plans. Stay positive and stay strong and lean on each other for support if needed. We are all in this together. Now, some encouraging news. Mavs owner Mark Cuban believes that the NBA will begin play again in mid-May, although without fans in the stands. That's what he told WFAA-TV. If that's the case, the NBA will be the first league to return to action since the shutdown back on March the 12th would help serve as a distraction to the international pandemic. And that's what sports provides in these crisis moments, a chance yeah. to kind of just forget about it for a moment. Yeah, absolutely. I hope he's right. Me too. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. All right, sunny and hot tomorrow, 94 the high temperature. Keep in mind our average high is 76, so we'll be well above that, but just shy of the record, which is 97. Then we go into Thursday and Friday, still near 90, but the weekend will feature some cooler temperatures back in the mid to upper 70s. Not much of a rain chance, though. Thank you so much, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is up next. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock.